Hello everyone, it's Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, so last year I made a Pochet box, well this Pochet box. And if you want to know why I did it, what a Pochet box is and how I did it, watch this video. So let's talk briefly about what a pochet box actually is. Well, so this is a pochet box. Um, pochet means pocket in French and it's often used to refer to a kind of sketch, a small sketch. Um, and a pochet box is what you might use to capture that. So it's a self-contained box which can be used both as an easel, a storage container, a pallet, everything you need all in one box that you can take with you to capture these pochet sketches. So first question I guess is why did I bother making my own pochet box when there's lots to buy? Well they're really expensive essentially and none of them quite had everything that I thought that I needed and uh, of course I like painting and I like I like making things so I made lots of furniture and I thought well let's let's make a small box and the, the, the features that this has got which I I like most is it's got um, different places to clip a, uh, a strap so that it can go over my shoulder and I can paint with it. And then I wanted one just the right size, which could also hold uh, wet canvases if I wanted, um, which this one does, I'll show you inside in a moment. And uh, that I could use for more than one medium. Um, and to make that happen, you need to be able to have the box and the, the painting area go at any angle. And that's how these special hinges come in. Of course, I wanted one which could just fit on any tripod. So for example, I've got my tripod here, which has just got a normal quick release plate on it. And it's really easy to fit a quick release plate uh, to the bottom. So now all I have to do to get my easel working is pop it on like that. And we're ready to go. Anyway, let me show you inside. So now what's going on inside the box? Well, let me show you. We've got our, our pallet and I've got little wooden struts attached to it here, which means when I put it in, the paint doesn't touch the, the wooden bit. You can see I've been using it. So there's lots of wet paint around here and just simply covering it with a bit of cling film or a, a plastic bag keeps that nice and intact. If I take away the pallet, you got the sort of innards. Um, I'm primarily a palette knife painter, but there's room specifically for short handled brushes as well as sort of normal palette knives. And you can get a surprisingly large amount in here. Um, this is my brush roll holder. So that lots of people do different things. You can make little holders on the side to put your brushes. So I found a really simple solution of having a tie on canvas. So if I just tie this here, one little knot and another knot here, then as you're using your brushes, you just pop them down there, down there. Now the advantage of this system is as things are getting dirty and when you want to kind to clean up you just untie and then you roll the bag up so I can roll it up and now the uh, brushes are nice and protected and clean so if I just untie that got enough room for a few tubes of paint again the the smaller size the kind you might want to just take out with you um, a little pot so you can keep some Turps in here. Um, and then at the front, we've got some magnets. The advantage of those is you take a palette knife, pop them there, pop a palette knife there. Easy storage on the go. Now, if we look at the front here, we've got our sort of painting area. So what I've got is a small piece of wood with some magnets and more magnets glued up the front. All I, all I do to paint is snap a magnet on pull out my panel and then I've got an elasticated front 
pop that down and it's held securely in place ready to paint. Now that brings me to the wet panel area. So we look inside here, there's space, two runners where you can pop a wet panel here, and another wet panel just in the front of it there. So plenty of space if you've been painting, let's say you've been painting for an hour or two, you'll be able to keep the panel in there, shut up, close it there, everything stays nice and secure. So now's the good bit. I'm going to show you, talk you through how I made it. I'm going to empty this out and uh, there's a link in the description to all the sort of special parts I talk about um, and there's also a little list of the various types of wood and different bits and pieces I needed for this. So it starts off just as a 10 inch by 12 inch box, just a square even, that you can see at the top it as a work in progress. Um, all of these edges are made with 10 mil thick strip wood, which is eight centimeters, except this end on both, because it holds the torque hinges, has to take a bit more strain. This is from 16 mil thick wood, which is about, about two thirds of an inch, give or take. Now to connect these sides, I use mitre joints. I cut them on a bench saw, but you could just as well do an end joint just have to be careful with measuring it. Um, and then I've fixed it all together with screws at each end, as you can see there. Having done that, you can cut some three mil ply. So you can see it's about three mil thick to the size of your box. And then that simply screws or tacks down all around the outside. If you want to make the panel that you're painting on a little bit shorter, to enable this to sit there. And the back ply, the ply which is sitting where the tripod holds it, so on the bottom, that's approximately 10 mil ply. And the reason for that, if I unscrew the quick release plate, you can see in there is a T-nut. And a T-nut something you can buy online and it fits uh, Sort of standard tripods so it's, it gives you the same connection say that a uh, a camera has and Liz allows you just to screw in a quick release plate or even just screw directly onto a tripod um, inside here it's just some more plywood cut to whatever shape you want to create some spaces that you want and I made sure that this is big enough for my short handle brushes um, the the easel, I just cut another piece of ply from the same thickness and then gave it some rounded edges and used a jigsaw to cut out a thumb hole. But loads of loads of different easels fit in. So just as an example, I could easily have put my plastic easel in there, no problem. The torque hinges are a special bit in many ways. Those you have to buy from specialist shops or you can get them on Amazon and the link in the description below to all of these bits. Um, and they, they do just screw on simply and then you can tighten them, loosen them so they can take more or less weight or be easier, harder to open. So inside here are a couple of fiddly bits. So you've got the thing which holds down. That's simply another piece of plywood or strip wood with two eyelets and then two eyelets at the bottom on another little bit of wood and I've just got a rubber band holding it down but there are loads of ways you could do that depending on what you have. It's also not totally essential so you could leave that off. I found it fairly useful but sometimes I'll use a bigger panel and so I won't, I won't actually use this. Um, I've also got runners inside and again there's a few ways that you can do that. What you need to do is work out exactly the thickness of the panels that you use because it'll all be a little bit different um, and then either using several bits of wood so you could glue together several bits of plywood which you've cut to shape or what I've done is I've used one bit of wood and I've passed a saw over it to set depth just to create these runners. Again it's not totally essential to have this because you can buy relatively cheap 
canvas storage boxes um, of various sizes. And the last sort of major bit to, are these magnets. So these are neodymium magnets, they're really strong. They're fairly brittle, but um, they hold together well if they're glued down. So all I've used is some Gorilla Glue to glue these in different places. So I can pop my little uh, panel holder in different places. And the same, I've got a couple of magnets here just to pop things down really conveniently. And of course, little touches like having some D-hooks. I put one in each corner and then one here and here. And these just are places which it's convenient to either have it over your shoulder or have it so you can paint with it. Um, and uh, you can also, I put this one here in the middle because you can clip, for example, a brush washer on the edge there, which is again, really useful. And I think that is pretty much everything. I haven't covered all the little things. There's obviously little hinges here, but there's lots of ways you can work that out depending on whether you've got a panel holder or not and all these different things that you can sort of flex yourself. But hopefully from this rough idea, um, you got some motivation or enjoyment or inspiration to go and perhaps make your own. I'd say I did use power tools and bench tools and things like that, but just by making changes, not doing mitre joints, simple things like that, I'm sure that you could do it with just hand tools. And that is everything for today. It uh, has been a mammoth editing task, so I hope it's been useful or interesting for you. Um, if you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask me here on comments or on Instagram, and I'll try and help you a bit if you're thinking of starting out on a project like this. Totally worthwhile, and absolutely I'd say go for it. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe.